and me. If we receive the Spirit, you are the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. You walk about with the presence of God in your heart. Now, the disciples understood. We are going to become one <coughs> with Christ. We are going to become the witnesses. In other words, if you want to know what happened in heaven, you come to me. Amen. Because I'm a witness. Mm -hmm. I know what it's all about. Do you understand? Amen. In the world, a witness is somebody who has seen something. Mm -hmm. He's a witness. But it's not so in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Many people saw Jesus heal the sick, and yet they are not witnesses. Mm -hmm. To be a witness, you have to be chosen. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you have to be commissioned. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Amen. Commissioned. And thirdly, you have to receive the power. Amen. Then you become a witness. It's not anybody who walks up from home. Oh, I want to become a witness of Jesus. <laughs> you are going to become a false witness. That is the procedure. First, you are chosen. Secondly, you are called. Thirdly, you are established in it. And fourthly, you receive the power. Amen. Amen. See? You receive the power. Then you become a witness. You become a representative of Jesus Christ. Mm. Like Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, we are the ambassadors of Christ. Amen. In other words, Brother Sukha, you are an embassy, mm. a walking embassy. When you are walking at work with the Spirit of God in you, mm. you are the embassy. Amen. If somebody wants a visa to go to heaven, mm. he should come to you. Oh, yes, Do you understand what it means? That's why in the book of Acts, chapter 10, an angel appeared to Cornelius. I'm just quoting. He spoke to him. He said, your arms, you're a good man. Your arms have been accepted. But when it comes to preaching the gospel, I, an angel, cannot preach. God has got ambassadors here. You call for one called Peter. He's going to tell you everything. Amen. Do you understand? Because he is an ambassador. He can grant you visa. He can tell you what to do to go into the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, without the Holy Spirit, you are not. You cannot be an ambassador. Mm. So they understood it was one of the biggest mm. promises. Mm. But God is very specific and God is also precise. Mm. That's why brothers and sisters, if they give you something, there is no precision. Know it from the start. It's not God. When you hear a sermon, you don't know what is what. What? The devil is in it. Because God speaks clearly. Amen. So that you can understand. When he was actually giving the law, he says to Moses, He ye ye, O Israel. In, in Hebrew, Shema, O Israel. Which means, here with all attention because God speaks in a precise manner. If it many a time, you know, in the time of Elijah, first King 17 says to Elijah, Depart from here, go to Zarephath. God will give you precisions. Do you understand? <laughs> Except maybe when he told Abraham, but later on he showed him the promised land. He told disciples, you wait here where in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. Don't go to Hebron. Oh brother, I'm here in Hebron waiting for the promise of the Father. It will not happen. Because God is precise. And he demands obedience to his word. If you go to wait for it in Hebron, you are not going to have it. Stay in Jerusalem. Why? Because it's not by random that these things were done. A prophecy already said in Isaiah chapter 2, out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of God shall go forth from Jerusalem. Amen. You see, everything with a reason. A reason. Do you understand? Wait in Jerusalem until you receive the power. <laughs> now they understood. Now let's go back to Acts chapter Chapter 1. 
They understood what it was all about, and they went to wait in Jerusalem. But how were they waiting? That's our question. Verse 12. Actually, let's read verse 14. They all joined together constantly in prayer. Brothers and sisters, Jesus never said, go and pray. He never said, go and fast. He said, go and do it. Wait. But we find here, they went and began to pray. Constantly. Why? Because, brother, even if God says something, it has to be your desire to see that thing fulfilled in your life. Okay. Oh, brother, let's not worry. Bring in some cards here. We are going to rejoice. We are going to... No, he told us to wait. So don't even think. Let us talk about politics. Waiting for the promise. Uh-uh. Say, Lord, you promised the Holy Spirit. Amen. Send it on us. We want to be part of that. We are desirous to see it. Come to us. Just exactly as even today, whatever God promised for you, in the old, in the New Testament, you have to desire to see it come to pass in your life. If, friend, people go to church, they go to church, they see it. Ask them, what did God promise for you? For you to be just a church member? No. God promised that in that day, nobody is going to teach his brother saying, not the law, for all shall be taught by the law. So, when you come to church, who do you hear? Is it a preacher? Mm -hmm. Or do you hear the Lord speak to you? We read in Jeremiah 33, Behold, in the days going there that are going to come, I'll make a new covenant with you. I'll take out your hearts of stone and I'll give you a new heart. Amen. And I will write my word in your heart. And I'll put my spirit in you Amen. to cause you to live according to my word. Amen. It's a promise. Amen. Now, are you desiring to see it to pass in your life? Amen. That to come to church is not a chore anymore. Amen. Let's go. Oh, I'm so, I'm tired. Uh, I wish it was someone, someday else. My God, you need a new heart. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes, to come to church is a big problem for you. You need a new heart. Because if you have a new heart in which the word of God is written, you can't wait to get to change. Like David could say, I am happy. When I am told, let's go out to the house of the Lord. I can't wait to, say, to start singing. Why? Because in my heart, I receive a new heart. I love the word of God, not because the church is telling me to love it, but because God has done something in my life. Amen. See? Mm. Even if God gives a promise, brother, let it be your desire to experience what God has said. That's why they were there. Waiting for the promise of God in an atmosphere of prayer. Do you understand? In an atmosphere of holiness in an atmosphere of consecration. Lord, send it to us. We can't wait. They were just praying. Today, sadly, there are many churches which are also praying. They also receive promises. They believe in the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you go to one of the creeds of the Catholics, they said, we believe. Jesus is going to return to judge the dead and the quick. They believe Jesus is going to return. All the Pentecostal, Pentecostal churches, they believe. Maybe the only one who are not uh, uh, waiting for Jesus to return are Jehovah Witnesses because they believe that Jesus is already on the earth from the year 1914. Do you understand? But all the rest, they are waiting for the return of Jesus. Uh, how are they waiting for it? 